Now, this is very, very shocking from the Baltimore Ravens. Now, it's not shocking that they placed a franchise tag on Justin Matabike. That, that's not surprising at all. But what's shocking to me is the timing of it. Because we know Baltimore Ravens, they will fight, kick, scratch, claw all the way up until the deadline. We see it every single year. We see it with the franchise tag. We see it when it comes to signing their players. We see it when it comes to signing their draft picks. They will push everything down to the limit. We see it when it comes to the, the 4 p.m. deadline for the 53-man rock. We see it every single year in every single kind of way. But what's shocking to me is the fact that right now I'm recording this video at 1.12 p.m. The deadline for the franchise tag to be applied to a player is 4 p.m. So it's a little less than three hours away, but the Baltimore Ravens said, no, 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 no. We're not going to wait until 4 p.m. We're applying this now. And in my opinion, and I don't really think this is an opinion, but in my opinion, I think that lets us know that these two sides are extremely far apart in negotiation. Because get this, if they were close, if, if they were even remotely close, like they're not even in the same, they're not on the same page right now, of course, but I don't even think they're in the same book right now. Because if they were remotely close to each other in these contract negotiations, if they were close in talks, then why, why would you, like, why would you just forfeit these last three hours and be like, all right, nope, place the franchise tag on them. No, they, they got to be extremely far apart in contract negotiations. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just is what it is that's part of contract talk this is stuff that happens it's business and the baltimore ravens like we've been talking about ever since that report came out a couple of months ago that i guess i i had known about it before the season started but i found out during the season uh but the baltimore ravens since they tried to sign justin matabike before the season even started they, they tried to sign him they tried to get him inked up but he was like, no, they obviously ain't come to a contract ag agreement then. But Baltimore Ravens, they knew. They just knew. They were like, oh, if this dude gets his opportunities, oh, his money is going to go through the roof. And that's exactly what happened. This guy had 13 sacks in the regular season, a bunch of quarterback hits, a bunch of pressures. But then he even added, I think he added to his salary in the playoffs too when he sacked Patrick Mahomes in that AFC Championship game. Oh, he added a couple more meal to his bread. So shout out to Justin Matabike. But what is going to happen? What could possibly happen? And what does this mean for the Baltimore Ravens? Their salary cap space? How much money do they have or do they not have now? Who are some other players that could possibly get restructured in order to create salary cap space? Because remember, when the new league year starts, the Baltimore Ravens, every single team, they have to be under the salary cap. And while the NFL, they did give teams a nice little chunk of change and a nice raise, it doesn't mean that everybody just got all this money now. Because with the NFL salary cap going up, that means players' values go up. How much money they can make, that goes up big time. And we're going to talk about that in a couple of seconds. But before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you do not miss not a single update because ooh, it's going to be a lot of updates coming up very, very soon. Some fun ones, some exciting ones, some sad ones, some heartbreaking ones. It's going to be everything and more. So y'all stay tuned for that. Subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on and leave a like on the video because y'all have been doing that, which I appreciate. And it helps out a whole lot. Now, Matt BK, his franchise tag is worth 22.1 mil. Now, um, I think a lot of us expected them to place the franchise tag on him, but we were hoping that they could get a deal done so they could avoid the franchise tag uh, so they could be able to really maneuver their cap room a lot better. But um, this it's not really a good sign for their cap room as of right now. And what I mean when I say they could they could have maneuvered the cap a lot better, it would mean that they would have more control over it. Because we know with the set, with the franchise tag, that's all guaranteed. That all goes on your salary cap right here, right now. For this 22.1 mil, they can't break it up. They can't be like, all right, we're going to put 11 mil here and 11.1 mil there. No, 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 no. All 22.1 mil, that goes on your salary cap right now. Now, the deadline to get an extension done... I believe it's sometime in May, I believe. Uh, and y'all will know, I'm sure somebody will correct me in the comment section if that is incorrect. But I believe it's usually sometime in May. Um, and after that deadline, then that player will play on a franchise tag. So right now, Ravens got some time. 
They got some time. Just because they placed a the franchise tag on Justin Matabike right here right now, it does not mean that, oh, it's over. Oh, they're not going to get a deal done. Oh, man, even though they're so far apart right now, nothing can. No, no, no. They got plenty of time, and I'm sure they're going to do everything in their power and more to make sure they get this deal done and they can lock him up for years to come. And especially you think about the player, too, with the franchise tag. We talked about this before, but we got to talk about it real quick again. Franchise tag only is guaranteed money for one year. It's nice guaranteed money because you get paid the top five average salaries at your position, and it's all guaranteed, but it's only for one year. Players want long-term. They want longevity with their contracts. So that's why players fight so hard to get their bread. Now, um, looking at the Ravens' situation, uh, I had to ask Brian McFarlane, Ravens salary cap on Twitter, because he has all that information. I, I asked him, how much would this put if, if it this was before they officially placed the franchise tag on Matabike, but I, like a lot of us already did, we figured they would place the franchise tag on Justin Matabike. But I asked him how much money or how much cap how much would the Ravens be over the cap if they placed the franchise tag on Matabike? And he created a thread, not just for me, but really for all of us, uh, so we could have a better breakdown of everything and understand it a lot more. So Let's read it as follows. And again, this is Raven salary cap all together on Twitter. Any salary cap information you need to know, anything you need to know about Raven's money, he got you covered. Anyway, he said the Ravens project to be 11.8 mil under the cap with an exclusive rights free agent tender for Darius Washington. See, I didn't even know they did that with Darius Washington. So that will mean that Darius Washington, if he signs that tender, he will be coming back to the Ravens. And if it's, if it's an exclusive rights free agent tender, then <coughs> he got no choice but to come back to the Ravens. Because with those exclusive rights uh, tenders, they can't do nothing. They either sign with the team that, that put the tender on them or they don't play at all. So anyway, um, it says uh, the Ravens project to be 11.8 mil under the cap. This does not yet include Aguilar, whose deal 16 days later has still not been posted by the NFLPA. So look like Brian McFarland a little, a little upset about that. But anyway, he said the Ravens can tag Matabike now and have until March 13th at 4 p.m., to get under the cap So what are you saying with that Ravens can place the franchise tag on Matt BK, Which they did like about an hour later uh, They can place the franchise tag on him And then they have until March 13th at 4pm To get under the salary cap To where they're not in the negatives You know how you check your bank account And they have that, that red minus sign in front of your money That's never a good thing Oof, I have been there before plenty of times And it's, it's a very sad feeling Anyway, it says um, he also said Ravens have two easy moves to get under the cap. One of those is restructuring Lamar Jackson. They could save 11.1 mil. So that would be a big chunk of change right there. Um, and that, that will put them under. He also said, and cut Tyus Bowser. And that will give them 5.5 mil in cap savings. So that would be a total of 16.6 mil <laughs> altogether. Excuse me. He said, that will be enough to fit the tag for Matabike. They'll need further moves to create space for other signings. Restructures for Marcus Williams, Roquan Smith, Mark Andrews will create 15.7 mil more. So basically he's saying Ravens got some options. If they just want to get under the cap, you can go straight to Lamar Jackson and Tyus Bowser. And those moves could get you under the cap. But if you want more to make more moves, make additional signings and whatnot, like I'm sure they will do, then those are some other options that the Ravens could pursue. It says the cap savings for those restructures, Lamar Jackson, Williams, Roquan, and Andrews would be more if void years were added to the end of their deals. And we know like with void years, it, it, we as Ravens fans, we learn so much, man. We learn so much about the business uh, every single year. Uh, we understand void. I hadn't heard about void years until I think maybe like maybe two years ago. They, they were brand new to me. Um, but then when the Baltimore Ravens started using him and then Brian McFarlane, people like him and Jeff Zrebic and even Jameson Hensley, they start breaking it down and whatnot. I'm like, oh, okay, I got it now. I got it. Well, not all the way, but I'm still learning. But um, you learn a lot as a Baltimore Ravens fan when it comes to the business. Uh, but anyway, he said uh, here are some cuts that could also create space, cap space. Uh, Ronnie Stanley, if they do a pre-June first release, they could create 8.3 mil in salary cap. But if they do a post June first release, they could create 15 mil in cap space. So Ronnie Stanley is an option. Uh, they also said if Stanley takes a pay cut, it could create anywhere from four to seven mil, maybe. 
Another option to be released or cut would be Morgan Moses. That will create 5.5 mil in cap space. And then he also listed Pat Ricard as another possibility. He said with Ricard, they could save 4 mil if he was to be cut. They said, or they could sign him to an extension, which would create less cap space, but it would keep Pat Ricard around. Pat Ricard is somebody who I feel like the Ravens, they would do a cut and then bring him back. Because I don't think Pat Ricard is going anywhere. Last year, I for sure thought Pat Ricard was going anywhere. All I heard about Georgia's offense with Todd Monk's offense, they don't use no fullbacks. They don't use fullbacks, but oh, 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 the Ravens offense certainly used Pat Ricard uh, as a fullback, as a bit of everything, and he proved to be worth his spot on the roster for sure. So I, I don't envision him going anywhere. I think Ravens definitely find a way to keep Pat Ricard. But Ronnie Stanley... Ronnie Stanley is a very tricky one, and so is Morgan Moses. Something that we talked about recently. Uh, when you look at Ronnie Stanley and Morgan Moses, especially more so Ronnie Stanley, not, most, not necessarily Morgan Moses, but Ronnie Stanley, he's making big money, obviously. Shout out to Ronnie Stanley. He's getting his bread. But if you have a big money player, that's a starter. Your left tackle making big money, how can you – what's the word I'm looking for? Um – I can't think of the word right now, but how can you make it okay to where this is your starter? He's getting more than starter money, but how can you make it to where it's okay that he's on a rotation, that he's not even a full-time player, and he's a starter and he's making all that money? That, that's tough. So it's going to be interesting to see what, if anything, Eric DeCosta and the Baltimore Ravens do with the Ronnie Stanley. With a Morgan Moses. And the, the trickiest part about those two guys is that the whole offensive line is a big question mark, except Tyler Linderbaum. He is the only one who we know for sure, hey, that guy's going to be a Baltimore Raven next year. That's it. John Simpson, left guard, free agent. Uh, Kevin Zeigler, right guard, free agent. Uh, Morgan Moses, he could be a cap cut. Ronnie Stanley, he could be a cap cut. We don't know yet, but... We'll certainly see. And now with Justin Matabike officially being franchise tagged, Ravens are over the cap, so they got some corresponding moves that they have to make.